mentioned for us an example of the enmity and hatred that shaitan has towards all of humanity. And the Prophet ﷺ therefore described for us in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, he described for us a scene of shaitan, of Iblis sitting upon his throne. And his throne, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, is upon the water or upon the seas. And as he is sitting upon this throne, he is surrounded by the other shayateen, the other devils who are around him. And Iblis is then ordering his followers to go out and to cause corruption, to go out and to cause evil amongst the people. And when they return, Shaytan begins to ask each and every one of them, what did you do? What did you do to cause evil? What did you do to cause corruption upon the earth? And so one of them will say, I whispered to so-and-so, I tempted so-and-so, until he was able, until I was able to cause him to steal. And another will say, I whispered and tempted so-and-so until he abused someone else. And then one of them will say, in the Prophet وسلم, says, ثُمَّ يَجِيءُ أَحَدُهُمْ فَيَقُولُ مَا تَرَكْتَهُ حَتَّى فَرَّقْتُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ امْرَأَتَ The Prophet وسلم, says, until one of them will say, I did not leave so-and-so, I did not abandon so-and-so, until I caused him to be separated from his wife. And so, Shaytan, the Prophet وسلم, says, Shaytan will then call him, and honor him. And he will say, you are the one. Meaning you are the one who achieved the highest that could be achieved. Meaning he is the winner from amongst all of the devils, being the one who caused the most corruption. And so shaitan honors him because of the, the immense corruption that he caused through separating a man from his wife. And the meaning of all of this is that the most beloved deed in the sight of the devil, meaning the deed that causes the greatest amount of corruption is that when the husband and wife are separated, that when they become divorced, that when he causes problems and stress and hardship and places it between them. And that through this separation, he's able to cause even more corruption and even to befall the husband or to befall the wife or perhaps to befall their children after that. And today, if we were to look at the surveys, of the countries around the world, particularly the countries that are of a Muslim majority, you will see that the divorce rates have spiked in the past 20 or 30 years, with very little exception. In some Muslim countries, in some of the countries in the Gulf states in, that are Muslim majority countries, you find that the divorce rate in some of them has reached 67, 67%. 67% of, of the people have fallen into divorce, or of the marriages have fallen into divorce. And you find that the countries that are very low on the scale of divorce are at least around 40 to 45%. And usually most of the countries around the world are above 50%. And so in this climate where we see that divorce has become so widespread between the people, it's important for us to reflect upon the legacy of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam to understand how he guided us in arranging the affairs of our families, how he stood as an example in dealing with his families, in avoiding strife, in avoiding quarrels between each other, how he wasallam sought to solve the problems that would occur and to impart wisdom to all of the creation, to all of humanity, in order for us to properly navigate our lives lives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He appointed the prophets to be leaders for humanity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّا That we granted for them azwaj, spouses وَذُرِّيَّا and children as well. And so by and large the prophets and the messengers were people who were given family, were given spouses, were given children. And through this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided humanity. Through this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave wisdom for humanity.
in terms of how they should be building their relationships, how they should be building their relationships within their homes, with their spouses, with their children, and so on and so forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرُ وَذَكَرُ that indeed in the Prophet وسلم, there has been a beautiful example. There has been an excellent example for whoever hopes in Allah and hopes in the last day and remembers Allah often. And so we need to look to the example of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, How did he treat his family? How did he deal with his spouses? How did he take care of these affairs in order for us to navigate our own lives, especially in these days when there is intense fitna, there is intense temptation all around the people wherever we turn. And the Prophet وسلم, would spend much of his time instructing the people of how to interact with each other, particularly instructing the men of their treatment towards their wives and towards their families. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, Dinar an faqtahu fi raqda, dinar an tasaddaqta bihi ala miskin, aw dinar an faqtahu ala ahlik, a'zamuha ajran lilladhi an faqtahu ala ahlik. And the Prophet ﷺ would say that the dinar, the dollar, the amount, the wealth that you spend to free a slave or the wealth that you spend to help a needy person or the wealth that you spend upon your family the greatest of it the most virtuous of it the most beautiful of it is the one that you spend upon your family and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said innaka lan tunfiq nafaqatan tabtaghi biha wajh Allah illa istadata illa istadta biha darajatan um, that the Prophet ﷺ said that there's nothing that you spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the face of Allah Azza wa Jal. There is nothing that you spend for His sake except that it will raise you a rank, it will raise you a degree. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Hatta even the bite that you place in the mouth of your wife. This is something that Allah Azza wa will raise your ranks about. And so here the Prophet ﷺ again is instructing the people of how to treat their, their families, to feed their families, take care of their families, to feed their wife in a way that is beautiful, in a way that is pleasant. And the Prophet ﷺ once he said, لَقَدْ طَعَفَ بِآلِ مُحَمَّدِ الْيَوْمِ نِسَاء كَثِيرٌ وَاللَّهِ مَا أُولَٰئِكَ بِخِيَارِكُمْ And the Prophet ﷺ said, Today gathered around the house of Muhammad ﷺ where many women, many women came complaining about issues to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, مَا أُولَٰئِكَ بِخِيَارِكُمْ These are not the best amongst you. Meaning that the, that what, that the Prophet ﷺ was warning them after having spoken to them about them bettering their treatment to their husbands. That their treatment to their husband was not ideal. So he said, these are not the best amongst you. And so in this way, the Prophet ﷺ used to warn, used to warn the women about treating their husbands not correctly and would warn the husbands as well about treating their, their women not correctly or treating them with ill treatment. And this is very important because sometimes when people come to speak or they come to talk about the relationship between the husband and the wife, they will focus on one and ignore the other. They will talk to the husband about how you need to be good to your wife and ignore the wife's rights for the husband and how she needs to treat her husband with proper treatment. But the Prophet ﷺ was strong in his speaking to both parties. And the Prophet ﷺ when speaking to the husbands, he said, nisa'ikum." And this was in his last speech ﷺ, in his khutbah al-wada'a, in his final sermon, that he said, nisa'ikum," or nisa'." That have taqwa of Allah, fear Allah in regards to your women, in regards to the women that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has placed in your in your lives. For indeed, you have only taken them by the entrustment of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The only reason you have a wife, the only reason this has even been made halal for you, is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala entrusted you with her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed them in your trust, meaning the way that you treat them, the way that you take care of them. This is something that you are first responsible in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before anyone else. Before anyone else. This is an entrustment that Allah gave you. If you ruin that entrustment, if you treat that entrustment wrong, the first one you have to answer to is Allah, not to her. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who entrusted you to her. 
And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so the Prophet وسلم, is reminding you, if you break that trust, you will answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who entrusted you with her. And likewise, the Prophet وسلم, when dealing with a woman in Medina, and the Prophet وسلم, reminded her, he said, فَكَيْفَ أَنْتِ لَهُ فَإِنَّهُ جَنَّتُكِ وَنَارُكِ He said, how are you with him? How are you treating him? For indeed, he is your Jannah in Nar. He is your Jannah in Nar. The way, be wary of the way that you treat your husband because he is going to help you attain paradise or hellfire. And the way that you treat him will dictate either whether you will enter into paradise or the hellfire. And so the abuse that you show your spouse is one that you will be held to account for. And the kindness and generosity and mercy and compassion and good treatment that you show one another will give you beauty and excellence in this life and it will give you beauty and excellence in the next life as well. And the Prophet وسلم, when he married Safiya bint Huyay uh, anha, Umm al Mu'mineen, that the Prophet وسلم, they mentioned the story that when he married her and she was coming to get upon the horse, to get on top of the horse to ride it. At the Prophet ﷺ, he knelt down and he put out his knee so that she could step on his knee and she can reach the horse in order to ride it. So the Prophet ﷺ bent his knee and he would say to her, Is'adi ala rukbatay, that put your leg and, and boost yourself off of my knee. So she said, فَتَقُولُ خَجَلْتُ أَنْ أَضَعَ قَدَمِي عَلَى رُكْبَتَيْ She said, I felt shyness. I felt shyness, bashfulness in order to put my foot on the knee of the Prophet The act of chivalry of the Prophet placing his knee on, on the ground so that she could step on his knee, that caused her to feel so much compassion and shyness and humbleness towards the Prophet She said, I refuse to put my foot on the knee of the Prophet So what did she do instead? She knelt and put her knee on the knee of the Prophet and used that to boost herself upon the horse because of her bashfulness of putting her foot on the knee of the Prophet But this kindness, and it shows you the kindness that you show to your spouse is something that inspires more kindness from the other person. The positivity you bring when you're treating each other is one that will inspire more positivity in the relationship. And the Prophet would joke and laugh with his wives. The Prophet ﷺ in one example, he said to Aisha, he said, Ya Aisha, inni la'alamu idha kunti anni radiya wa in kunti anni ghadbana. He said that I know if you have been pleased with me or if you have been angry with me. Oh Aisha, I know, I can tell immediately if you're happy with me or if you're upset with me. So she said, فَقَالَتْ مِنْ أَيْنَ تَعْرِفُ ذَلِكَ She said, how would you know this, O Messenger of Allah? So the Prophet Sallallahu said, أَمَا كُنْتَ عَنِّي رَاضِيَ فَإِنَّكِ تَقُولِينَ لَا وَرَبِّ مُحَمَّدْ وَإِذَا كُنْتِ غُضْبَانَ فَقُلْتِ لَا وَرَبِّ إِبْرَاهِيمْ That she said to, the, he said to, to her, uh, رضي الله عنها, he said to her, if you're happy with me, then you will say, no by the Lord of Muhammad. And she said, and if you're upset with me, then you will say no by the Lord of Ibrahim. Meaning that when you want to swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're happy with me, you say by the Lord of Muhammad, wa Rabbi Muhammad. She said, but if you're ups he said, but if you're upset with me, then you say by the Lord of Ibrahim and you don't mention my name. And this was the Prophet ﷺ joking with her. This is the Prophet ﷺ, even if he's mentioning something real, he's joking with her about this. So she said, قَالَتْ أَجَلْ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهِ مَا أَهْجَرُ إِلَّا إِسْمُكَ She said, this is true, O Allah. Wallahi, I do not, I cannot abandon other than your name. What is she saying, Aisha? She's saying, from how much that I love you, O Messenger of Allah. From how much that I love you and I would never leave you or abandon you in any way, the most that I can do is not mention your name when I'm upset. The most that when I get upset with you, I just don't mention your name and I abandon saying your name. And this is from the excellent treatment of the Prophet ﷺ for her. That if she got upset, the worst that it would get was that she wouldn't mention the Prophet ﷺ, she would mention Prophet Ibrahim when she would swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look at Aisha radiallahu anha, and she said that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She said, "Kuntu ashrabu min ina wa ana wa ana haid." She said, "I would drink from a cup, and I was of menstruation." She said, 
Then I would hand it to the Prophet The Prophet would take the cup and would turn it to where she drank from in order to drink exactly where she drank from And this is the Prophet showing you that he's not above showing affection. He's not above showing love. Even though she's in a time they cannot have relationships at that time, yet the Prophet is showing her this love and showing her this affection and creating this bond between each other. And this is incredibly important for us to think about and for us to reflect upon. And the Prophet ﷺ guided us in our relationship with our wives and the wives in their relationship with their husbands. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا يفرك مؤمن مؤمنة إن كريها منها خلقة رضي منها آخر. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the believing man should never hate or despise the believing woman. You should never fall into the state where you have contempt and hatred towards each other. Then the Prophet ﷺ tells you, إن كريها منها شيئا. If there's something about he does, does not like. If there's something about her that he hates, there's something else that he will like. And one of the major issues that leads to discontentment in the relationships is that as soon as someone as soon as you know a problem occurs or as soon as someone has something, they try to, to compare it. As soon as they have something to compare it. Like somebody buys a car and they're so happy with their car and they think they have the best car. As soon as they see someone else with another nice car, they start to compare their car against theirs. Well, I have this feature, but you have that feature, and I have this feature, and you have that feature. And if the other car has more features than their car, all of a sudden the car that they were so happy about, they're not so happy about it anymore. And not to reduce us to physical property, to reduce us as human beings to physical property. But unfortunately, when we deal with each other, sometimes we fall into the same trap. The person has a wife and alhamdulillah she's treating him well and everything's good Yet he goes to his friend's house and he sees that his friend's wife is cooking all of this food and doing all of this work And he starts to think, why is my wife not doing as much? Or he goes to his friend's house and she sees, he sees his wife is cleaning all of the house and all of it is so clean He's thinking, why does my wife not do the same? But maybe that person's wife who's cleaning or cooking so much, she gets angry quickly but your wife is very tolerant Maybe she doesn't teach her children Qur'an as much as your children teach Qur'an. Your wife teaches her children Qur'an. And so the person is always looking and comparing for others. The Prophet ﷺ is reminding you, if there's something you don't like about your spouse, there's something else you do like. There's something else you will like about them. And so think about the positives in the characteristics of each other. Think about the positives that people have rather than always focusing on the negative. And unfortunately women do the same thing as well. And they compare their husband and say, why can't you be like so-and-so who earns more, more money or has a better job or is better in this or is better in that. And we create these comparisons and we cause more strife and anger rather than causing harmony between each other. So the Prophet ﷺ reminds you, the Prophet ﷺ reminds the husband and the wife, if there's something you dislike, there's something that you do like. So look for the things that you like about each other. And this is incredibly important for us to change our perspective and to look for the positives in one another. One of the beautiful examples that I read is about Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi And the people said about him He would be praying and making dua for his wife And one day he was making dua for his wife who had passed away And he said Ma laha. What should I make dua for her? He said sala fi shay. He said we lived 20 years We never differed in any matter There was not a single matter that we differed in and people were amazed. How can anybody have a relationship that they never differ with each other? He said, قَالَ كُنْتُ إِذَا غَضَتْ أَرْضَدَتْنِي وَإِذَا غَضَبَتْ مِنِّي أَرْضَيْتُهَا He said, if I became angry, she used to please me. She would do whatever it was in order to please me. And if she became angry, I would do whatever she needed in order for me to please her. And this is like their relationship was a rope. It's if one person is pulling, then the other person would let go a little bit. You know, they give up the rights. One person's angry, they do whatever it is to please the other person. And if the other person gets angry, the other side would do the same. But when both sides are pulling on the same rope, and both sides are angry, and nobody wants to cede anything, this is when you break the string completely. 
And so the way of our Prophet ﷺ is to constantly be generous in the way that you treat the other person. To be generous, not being like, I'm not going to give an inch until they give an inch. And both sides are pulling on the rope. No, rather you are generous in your treatment of others. You show excellent treatment. You say a kind word. You give those, those steps. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you back much more in return. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. One of uh, the doctors, uh, researchers who did research on divorce, and they came up with four, what they called, uh, four major signs of divorce. If the person falls into these problems, that it's a major sign that there's serious problems with the relationship and it might lead to divorce. And I wanted to go over them because they did a lot of research to come up with this. And SubhanAllah, the things that they mentioned, we see how the Prophet ﷺ dealt with it in his own life. One of the major issues they mentioned is criticism. And this is different than complaining, but they mentioned criticism when you're complaining not about the problem but you're criticizing and attacking the person so for example a complaint is you know, you were running late today and I was scared because you didn't tell me you were going to run late and I thought you agreed you are going to call me if you're going to run late from work the criticism is you don't think about how your behavior affects me you're selfish you don't care about me this is criticism you're attacking the other person rather than talking about the problem that occurred between them and this is a first step that usually leads to the other steps the other problems the other major signs of divorce and the Prophet ﷺ, we look at his example the Prophet ﷺ, he'd wake up in the morning he would ask his wives do we have food is there any food and they would say no the Prophet ﷺ would say, inni, idhan, inni In that case, I'm going to be fasting. He didn't say, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you buy food? Why didn't you bring food? Why didn't you cook something? And it creates an argument. No. He says, there's no food? Okay, no problem. I'm going to be fasting. The Prophet ﷺ didn't take these as opportunities to criticize the person. And as Ibn Malik عنه, is a small boy given to the Prophet ﷺ to be his servant. He says, Khadim to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tis'a He said, I was serving the Prophet for nine years. He said, not once did the Prophet ﷺ say, why did you do this? Why did you not do this? Not once did the Prophet say this to him. And this is the way of the Prophet ﷺ. He's not going to criticize the person and he's teaching through other means and creating a relationship through other means. The second point that they mention is contempt. This is when the person is showing derogatory uh, you know, behavior towards the others. You're rolling your eyes. You're treating the other person like they're stupid. You're having these, these acts of contempt towards each other. And you're disrespecting each other. And sometimes it's through foul language. Sometimes it's through attacking each other. And this is considered the greatest predictor of divorce. That when people are showing disrespect for each other, it's the greatest predictor of divorce. The Prophet wasallam, you know, he told us, I am the advocate advocate for a house in the middle of Jannah for whoever abandons arguing even if they're right. Why? Because argumentation might cause the people to fall into having disrespect for each other. And maintaining that respect is incredibly important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu inna min azwajikum wa awladikum aduun lakum fahdharuhum. That oh you who believe Indeed, some of your wives or your spouses and some of your children are enemies for you. So beware of them. This verse was revealed about some of the women who were preventing their husbands from performing the hijrah, from migrating. Allah revealed this, there are enemies for you, they're preventing you from doing good. So imagine this serious problem in a relationship. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to conclude this verse? وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ But if you forgive each other, if you overlook each other, if you pardon each other, then Allah is forgiving and merciful. And so when you fall into these major problems, instead of falling into contempt and having this disrespect for each other, look for the opportunity to forgive each other, to pardon each other, to overlook the faults of each other. And this will allow us to fall into a place where you have constructive relationship rather than attacking each other and feeling disrespectful about each other. Another major point that they mention is defensiveness. The idea of being defensive when someone mentions something. And all of us probably do this to some extent, but it can become very toxic between the husband and between the wife. So an example that they mention is, 
Someone will say, you know, did you call so-and-so and tell them that we can't go there? We're going to an appointment. Did you call them, tell them that we can't go to the appointment? And the person gets defensive. They say, I'm too busy. Don't you know how busy I am? What's wrong with you that you're asking me to do these things and you know how busy I am? This is the person being defensive. Whereas a better answer would be like, no, you know what? I was busy and I forgot and I should have asked you to do it. And, but you know what? Let me call them right now. Right, so one is a very defensive response and the other one is less defensive. And this is subhanAllah, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, um, uh, he, Aisha woke up at night and she thought the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left. And she was afraid the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went maybe to another wife. So she felt, and she felt the Prophet was still there. So the Prophet ﷺ woke up because Aisha was feeling, next, feeling him while he was sleeping. So she, he woke up and he said, what's wrong? And she said, um, uh, she said nothing. So the Prophet ﷺ, then he understood what had happened. So he said, Aja'uki shaytanuk. Did your shaytan come to you? Did your shaytan come to you and whisper to you? So Aisha got a little bit defensive. What did she say to the Prophet? She said, Alaka shaytan. Don't you have a shaytan as well? So she said, why are you always talking about my shaytan? Don't you have a shaytan as well? So she said to him, Alaka shaytan, don't you have a shaytan? How did the Prophet respond? Now she got defensive. Because usually what happens is, now one side gets defensive, what happens? Now it turns into a fight. Right? It turns into a fight. The one person gets defensive and the other person starts fighting with them and it devolves into a fight. So he could have said, why are you talking about my shaytan? You're the one who's, you know, sus uh, suspecting me and then it turns into a fight. No, the Prophet ﷺ said to her, yes, I do have a shaytan. Except, but Allah gave me power to overpower it. But Allah gave me power to overpower it. So he didn't go down the road of falling into the argument and take the bait like many of us do. If one side gets defensive, then find a way to not go into the argument. Find a way to get out of the question without getting into an argument. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you when you are able to do this. And the final part, point is stonewalling. And this is when you refuse to answer each other. And this is very pro predominant in men. Men will, ha will do this, they said 85% of the time more likely for men to do this. What does it mean? You get into an argument, there's an issue that comes up, so you stop talking completely. You stop responding completely, just shut down, right? And so this is very frustrating for the other person because it makes it, them feel like they're not being listened to and it makes them feel like they're not being valued. And this is not the way of the Prophet ﷺ. It's important to have the ability of listening to the other person. You know, there's a long hadith, the hadith of Abu Zarr, Umm Zarr, a very long hadith, I don't want to go through it, where Aisha is telling the Prophet ﷺ some of the stories that the women were saying about their husbands. And it's a long hadith, she says the first one said this, and the second one, the third one said this. And until she came to the story of Umm Zarr, and the hadith is known as the story of Umm Zarr, and she goes to the long story of Umm Zarr, which Umm Zarr was married to Abu Zarr, and she loved him a lot, and then they got divorced for some reason, and she was still in love with him and he married someone else. And, and the story goes on until the end. And in this story, very long hadith. At the end of the hadith, Umm Zara said, لو, لو بلغ, uh, that If you, I was given everything that was on this earth, everything that I was given in this dunya, it would not be equal to even one day with Abu Zara. This is how much she loved Abu Zara. So the Prophet ﷺ at the end of this long story of his wife and how many times do you get home from work and your wife tells you a long story and you can't even hold on, you can't even pay attention for two minutes. And one brother, was, one sheikh was telling me, you know, his daughter would come to him and tell him a story, you know, tell him what happened at work and he would just say, wow, mashallah, wow, mashallah, wow, mashallah. One day his daughter is coming and telling him something and he's telling her, wow, mashallah, he's not listening. You know, he's just saying, wow, mashallah, but he's not listening. And then his wife came and she said, your daughter came and told you that she cut her hand and you're telling her, wow, mashallah, how can you do this? So unfortunately, we don't, we're not listening, but the Prophet ﷺ, he hears this whole narration from Aisha, this huge story from her. And at the end, he tells her, he says, Wallahi kuntu laki ka Abu zar, zar li umm zar. He said, Wallahi, I am to you like Abu Zar was in treating Umm Zara, that I am trying to treat you as well as he treated her. And so this is incredibly important, is to open the, the doors of communication between each other. And in our religion, if two people get into an argument, you are not
more than three days without conveying salam to each other. If you see each other, you need to say salam to each other. This is with a regular person, a random person, or any Muslim you have an argument with, let alone your own spouse, let alone somebody who you're living with, somebody who should be the closest to you. You need to have those doors of communication, even if it's difficult, to open them and to talk to each other so that both sides feel respect through whatever problem that they're facing. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to aid us in our homes. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 